hello everybody welcome to the channel if you watch the first part of this series you will know exactly where we are beginning from today um two days back i posted a video on some series that i'm doing regarding building your own virtual lab at home or at your workplace this could be something that you could use to demonstrate your concept you can practice whatever um, policy or anything out there before you actually enroll it out in the production environment you don't want to just show up at work and then just put in everything out there it might ruin your day i can assure you that <clears throat> So the other video, the first part, we created a bootable um, USB um, drive with Microsoft Hyper-V 2019 on it. So the rest of this video, we're going to continue with the installation of the Hyper-V on our server. Okay, so that's what this video is for. So as you can see, I already connected my 32 GB. Um, USB on the server and I'm booting I'm trying to access the boot menu as yeah so as you can see the Dell model that um, server that I'm using it's a power edge 2970 with a BIOS revision of 4.21 um, so this is the server that I'm, I'm installing the operating system on so that um, people um, you can use any server model that is older or, or newer. This one is just something that um, I was able to find laying around at my job, and I asked my supervisor if I could take it, and they gave me the chance to to use it. And I'm like, wow, this is going to be really great. It's going to be very, very helpful um, for me, you know. Um, so as you can see in the video, I am. The installation process has begun. If you look on the small screen, you can see that um, this is just to help you understand the boot process. You need to make sure you have the USB installed on the server. And then once you have that, make sure that you press F11. As you can see, let me show you on the screen. Um, it's not over here, but um, I'll show you. Um, there's another element. I think it's over here. Yep. So all about which side of the page you can see so let me scroll this up for you as you can see when you turn on your server you can see it's saying press f11 for boot menu so you have to press f11 it will take you to the boot menu and you'll be able to select the usb drive that you want to um, boot from so that is exactly what happened um so let's see so after the boot menu was complete after the installation after you press your f11 and selected your usb drive it went through a series of process then from there it will bring you to the screen where you're going to see microsoft hyper v 2019 click on start to begin the installation process so this is what happened next so you can see as you see setup is starting is waiting for it patiently to see where this takes us. Also, while it's processing, I'm going to take you through my setup. You see, I have my PF Stands firewall, I have my Fortinet firewall, and I have my server power edge 29. As you can see, um, one of my drives is failing. Uh, I have to, so I need to select, I accept the terms and conditions, and continue with the installation process. And this is going to be a custom installation, so I need to select this custom. And in here, I, as you can see, we already have some partitions in there. I'm going to delete all the partitions. So I'm going to delete all the partitions. So as you can see, I am deleting all the partitions that existed already, so that I could have um, one partition that I'm going to just install this operating system so after i delete all the partitions see the partition one and then all the partitions 
I don't need I just need one partition to do this installation on. And, uh, all right so this one I can delete this particular partition because it's a it's a whole different uh, section from the drive setup um, so I'm going to just click on next So one of the things I wanted to show was, as you can see, the last three, uh, four drives actually, I added them later. So that is why you have that extra 400 and something GB addition or separate. Because initially the server had one, two, three, four, you know, four drives, but I got the extra four later. So that is why that separate partition there so actually it, it was not configured to any kind of rate or anything so it's stated as a foreign uh, partition in the system so um, I'm just choosing the default rate configuration that was there to do the installation on so as you can see I'm still waiting for this installation to complete right now it's how much 50 something percent and uh, let me take you stick around to see what I'm doing over here. As you can see, this is the lab setup. This is what we're doing. Building our own virtual lab. You know, we created our bootable USB drive. And then I'm now creating uh, doing the installation on my server. As you can see, my USB drive is connected over there. And, uh, I when the system restarted, I just have to press my F11 to take me to the and from there it's just going to put it on 87% complete eighty-nine 90% this is moving it's moving fast that's what I like Ninety-one percent. Ninety-five percent. So showing around my setup, the things that I do around, you know, about the installation. Now it's rebooting, so that means the installation was successful. So it's going to restart, then it's going to bring us to our first interface. So for those of us who just like this was the first time installing at this page you press F11 you see the boot menu is over there for F11 and then wait when it take you to the next page and then you select your USB as your bootable and then it's gonna um, start the installation process for you. but in this case the installation is complete even at this point I can take off my USB but if I don't do anything else it's just gonna be fine it's gonna boot from the disk Two of my drives are failing. Oh my god, I might have to get some new drives and replace them. And for those of you who are watching now, um, I did some series on Fortinet Firewall on how to do the initial setup. You know, for anybody who just bought one and didn't know how to do it. 
challenge the configuration and stuff so there's i have videos on the channel on how to do um fortigate for fire firewall initial installation soon i'm going to make a video on gift sense as well So I'm going to create my password. Confirming the password. The changing password is OK. Good. So it's applying changes and we're almost here so bear in mind the hyper-v 2019 is it doesn't have a graphical user interface it's like a server call. okay so in this case everything you're going to be doing it's all going to be on command line interface so the first thing we can do is change the name or sorry uh, join the domain or web group in this case it's going to be a web group but remember this is going to be your isolated practice environment so it's going to be like isolated so this i'm going to we're going to go into any domain at the moment. and then the name we're going to leave the name like that the most important thing to me right now is to uh, is to configure the the remote access make sure the remote desktop is on because at this moment you can see the remote desktop number seven is I want that on and also set up the network details like with the IP address so I can be able to use my um, other computers to access it, you know, to access the Hyper-V manager on the server. So to be able to do this installation, like to make this change, just press the numbers corresponding to the um, procedures. For example, if I want to enable the remote desktop, I'll have to press number seven option number seven then enable by text we're saying that enable remote the press e so if i press e i'm going to enable remote desktop it gave me more options allow client to add any version of remote text yes i want to use that for now so i have to press option two and it's now remote desktop client running remote desktop best secure perfect you can see that number seven remote desktop client is now enabled so that means that if i assign an ip address to this computer i can use remote desktop and any computer to access it now the next thing that i'm more interested about is to assign an ip address to assign an ip address i might have to first of all make sure that i have a network an ethernet core connected to any of the network adapter link interfaces behind the server then i'm now going to assign an ip address for pressing number eight and uh, following the steps. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. So let me go, first I'm gonna make sure that I connect um, my ethernet port to the back of the server. Make sure that I have the port connected. So, okay. Let's see, it's hard to go around. Then it looks like, hey, oh, I'm gonna put it in this one. Can you imagine that? <laughs> That's it. Yeah, there you go. So I put on G1. So so now I can now go back and assign an IP address on the computer so that I'm able to uh, access it. So I'm gonna press the key number eight for um, network settings and press enter. And then it's gonna give me 
is for option number eight. To press option number eight. And uh, now there you go. There's no IP address assigned. It's saying one nine two one six nine dot two five four. This is an IP address, so that will not work for us. So we need to assign an IP address. So we need to press eight. Enter. It's going to give us option like one setup network adapter address, two setup DNS server, three clear DNS settings, four return to main. We want to set up a network adapter address. That's the one. Then we press S for static configuration. So I want to give it an IP address of 192.168.1.3. No, give it And then the default submit path for 255 for class C. The gateway will be 192.168.1.3. And there you go. Now we have all for setup um, basic configuration that are important to me. Then, so remember, this is the this is all we can see on this particular server installation. So the next thing we need to do is to learn how to access the graphical user interface. So that means that I just need to be able to connect this server to my Hyper-V manager on my client's computer. So um, the next video is going to be on connecting this um, Hyper-V server to our client computer that we're going to be working off for. We're going to be doing the installations and all of that. So um, I want to say thank you to all of you for watching this video and I'm looking forward to working with you on the next um, video content that is connecting the client computer um, to our hyper um, server if you do like the content please um, press the like and subscribe button